Welcome to our lesson number two. Lesson number two of performance uh, appraisal of uh, financial statements. I would want us straight away to look at those ratios that investors uh, like. What do you call the investors ratios? The investors what here? Yeah, ratios. So investors ratios, ladies and gentlemen, what we have. And the investors ratios, investors are interested in dividends. So it will be very important for us, number one, to calculate what we call the dividends yield. The dividends yield. So how do we get dividends yield? What I know with the, any yield, any yield, ladies and gentlemen, whichever yield, we must always be having market price per share down there. So dividends yield will be, dividends yield will be the dividends per share, dividends per share, all over market price per share. Please write this in full. This is the dividends per share, all over market price per what year per share. Ladies and gentlemen, for purposes of risk management, investors will be interested in what we call the dividends cover. The dividends cover. The dividends cover. The dividends cover. What do we have here in terms of dividends cover? I hope you are able to follow. <clears throat> so dividends cover, we shall look at the profit for the year. The profit for the year divided by dividends. Divided by dividends. Divided by dividends. So whenever we talk of dividends cover, we are looking at the profit here for the year. The profit for the year, which is part all over what year? All over dividends. Total dividends, total dividends. And then ladies and gentlemen, the other ratio that I would want us really to look at eh, is what we call the price earnings ratio. Price earnings ratio, it's an important investor's ratio. So number three, we have the price earnings ratio. This one here will be equal to MPS all over EPS. You can see MPS, market price per share, all over EPS like that. So this is quite important for me. <clears throat> so for me to be able to demonstrate this concept well, let's look at an illustration. So the illustration is here. The illustration is here. We are told Morgan Company is a listed company and has 50 cents. 50 cents, please, for us, it will be important to convert this to dollars or anytime you hear the word cents, percent, you divide this figure by 100. So then this will be 0.5. Equally share capital of dollars 20 million in issue. <clears throat> the company paid a dividend per share of 0 0.105 dollars. I've just divided this, this by 100. In its most recent financial uh, year, and the share price at the reporting date was 1.2. The additional information is as follows. We have statement of profit or loss. You can see profit before tax. You can see income tax expense and you are able to see the profit for the year. So they want us to give them dividend cover, dividend yield, PE, and then EPS. So the most important thing here will be for us to ascertain the news. So the first thing that you need to do here is to ascertain the news. You ascertain the news. News stands for a number of ordinary shares. So ascertain the news, and the news stands for what year? Number of ordinary shares. So number of ordinary shares, what do I have here? Number of ordinary shares, I will take the share capital, the share capital divided by the par value, par value per share. The share capital divided by the par value, number of ordinary shares, number of ordinary shares, number of ordinary shares, number of ordinary shares. So number of ordinary shares, ladies and gentlemen, we have been given here is a listed company and has 50 cents. This is 0.5 equity share capital. So straight away the 0.5 dollars represents, ladies and gentlemen, represents, ladies and gentlemen, our power value. And then of course the share capital itself is dollars 20 million. So we have dollars 20 million. We have dollars 20 million, dollars 20 million. So we have dollars 20 million divided by the per value, which is 0.5. So how many shares do we have here? 
how many shares do we have here? We have 20 million divided by 0.5, which gives me 40 million. <clears throat> which gives me 40 million. So once I have 40 million shares, every other thing now will fall in place. Every other thing will fall in place. Like now the first thing that they want us to do here in their requirement, they want me to give them the dividend cover. So how do I get dividend cover? To get dividend cover, ladies and gentlemen, to get dividend cover, ladies and gentlemen, dividend cover, dividend cover, <clears throat> dividend cover, we normally take the profit after tax, the profit for the year, right? Divided by total dividends, divided by total dividends. So the profit after tax, profit after tax, have they given us profit after taxation? <laughs> have they given us profit after taxation? Yes. You can see profit for the year is 22,680. Remember it's in terms of thousands of dollars. So it is 22,680,000. Mm -hmm. 22,680,000. Divide divided this by the total dividends. Our total dividends, ladies and gentlemen, what do we have here? Our total dividends, what do we have here? Our total dividend, what do we have here for total dividends? What do we have for total dividends? So ladies and gentlemen, what I have for total dividends, if I look at this scenery, the dividend, we are told here that the company paid a dividend of 10.5 cents. So it should be 0 0.105, 0 0.105 per share. So the dividend per share is 0 0.105, times the number of shares. Number of shares here were 40 million. So then this will be 22,680,000 divided by into brackets, 0 0.105 times 40 million, close brackets, close brackets, close brackets, for you to be able to get a dividend cover of 5.4 what year. So our profits are able to cover the dividends, shareholders will be happy with this, 5.4 times. The risk of you not paying them dividends is lower, is lower. The risk of you not paying them dividends is lower. So it's 5.4 what year times. So you can see the number of ordinary shares have really assisted. Always remember when you're punching this in your calculator to ensure that this is put in brackets, to ensure that that is put in brackets like that. That's number one. And then we go to number two of this question. So number two of this question, what do we have for number two in this question? So number two in this question, ladies and gentlemen, number two in this question, ladies and gentlemen, they want the dividend yield. So how do we get dividend yield? I love dividend yield, ladies and gentlemen, because to get dividend yield, 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 I will take the dividends per share all over market price per share. Anytime they want us to calculate, anytime they mention this word yield, I know the denominator must be market price per share. So the dividends per share, what do we have here? The dividends per share, what do we have here? Dividends per share, ladies and gentlemen, dividends per share, they already gave us a figure. The dividends that were paid per share, 10.5 cents, cents per cent means that you divide by 100. So that gives us 0 0.105. So 0 0.105 divided by the market price per share. And the share price at the reporting date was dollar one. So we have here 1.2. So then this will be 0 0.105 divided by 1.2 times 100, which gives us a yield of 8.75%. Thanks. Thanks. So, ladies and gentlemen, we are saying something very important here that should you want to get the dividend yield, it is always dividends per share all over market price per share. And the dividend per share is 0.105. I hope you saw how I took the 10.5 cents divided by 100 to get 0.105 divided by the market price per share, which is 1.2. And that is how I was able to get my 8.75%. And ladies and gentlemen, after that, ladies and gentlemen, after that, we go straight away to the next thing. The next thing here will be the PE ratio. We have the PE ratio. How do we get the P-E ratio? P-E is very interesting. To get the P-E ratio, ladies and gentlemen, this is normally what we do. 
To get the PE ratio, ladies and gentlemen, this is normally what we do. To get the PE ratio, to get the PE ratio, to get the PE ratio, you can see this price over earnings, price over earnings. So this has to be market price per share or over earnings per share. Market price per share, all over earnings per share, earnings per share. Ladies and gentlemen, have they given me the market price per share? Oh yes, they told me that the market price per share, the market price per share, they gave me a figure. Market price per share was 1.2. Market price per share is 1.2, 1.2, 1.2. So this will be 1.2. So 1.2 divided by the EPS. To get EPS, earnings per share, we normally take profits after tax. Profits after tax to get earnings per share, we normally take profits after tax all over number of ordinary shares. We normally take profit after tax all over number of ordinary shares. So profit after tax, what do we have here? Profit after taxation. Profit after taxation. These are <coughs> examiners. <coughs> <coughs> has given us the profit after tax. He has given us profit for the year is 22,680,000 because of the thousands up here. Is 22,680,000. Mm -hmm. So we have 22,680,000 mm -hmm. divided by number of ordinary shares, which are what here? 40 million. So we have here 22,680,000 mm -hmm. divided by 40 million, which gives me earnings per share earnings per share, so you can repeat this, it is 22, 680, right? 680,000, 680,000 divided by <clears throat> number of ordinary shares, which are 40 million. So this gives me 500 and what year? 67, 567. Let me check something here. Let me check something here. The number of ordinary shares, number of ordinary shares, we took 20 million, yeah, divided by, that is okay. So ladies and gentlemen, if that is the case, then the PE ratio will be very small. So 1.2 divided by, 1.2 divided by 567, divided by 567, which basically gives me zero, 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 Two one, so zero point zero zero two one like that. Zero point zero zero two one. So that is the PE ratio. It is market price per share all over what year? Somebody all over EPS. Market price per share all over EPS. All over EPS. So the gentlemen, once I get that, then now everything is at home. 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 Yeah. So from there, we have the last one, the EPS. EPS already we have the EPS that we got up there. It will be worthwhile for me to mention something here. It will be worthwhile for me to mention something to do with earnings yield. Even if you have not been asked, it will be very important for me to mention something to do with earnings yield. Ladies and gentlemen, earnings yield, earnings yield. Anytime they talk of the word yield, there must be MPS down here. So then this will be MPS down here because it is an earnings yield. So we have EPS up there. If you look at this formula keenly, if you look at this formula, the formula for PE, the formula for PE is MPS over what year over EPS? over EPS. So ladies and gentlemen, this formula has got some relationship with this. That PE ratio is a, a reciprocal, is a reciprocal, is a reciprocal of what year? Earnings yield. Is a reciprocal of earnings yield. You will see how this is applicable in your exams, in your exams. You will see, ladies and gentlemen, a situation where you'll be given like earnings yield of 0.1. If you give me earnings yield of 0.1, then straight away, I will be able to give you the PE ratio as the reciprocal, as the reciprocal of this. Reciprocal is one over, like that. 
So it's quite important for you to, to really appreciate that. So otherwise, thank you very much. I look forward to having another class with you in a few minutes.